All right, so um, another little side project. So I've got this Drake. It's a Drake uh, AC4 power supply on the bench. And this is a project for my dad. Uh, he asked me to rebuild this power supply for him, for his, uh, for his radio. He's got a Drake TR, TR4C, I think is the model number. Anyway, this is the power supply for it. So I, I've gone through and rebuilt it, uh, as you can see. Um, new caps, uh, new electrolytics, uh, basically replaced everything, um, all the components on the inside. It had all the original components, uh, from 19, I think they were all, they were date coded somewhere around 73, so they're, they've been in there for a while. And, uh, I wanted to, um, add a, uh, remote, um, I, I wanted to change the way the, uh, the power supply turns on. Uh, the way the power supply turns on now is uh, it's turned on from the radio remotely uh, through the uh, through an on-off switch. Um, but with the setup, all of the um, current for the power supply goes through that on-off switch on the radio. And uh, when I was looking up articles on on the web before I started this rebuild, I found it, I came across an article by uh, a fellow uh, uh, N1VQW.net. Uh, had a uh, uh, basically a write-up of his rebuild of an AC4 power supply, where he used a um, uh, basically a relay, a 120 volt AC relay, to uh, control the power supply using the on-off switch to turn the relay on or off, and then the relay it would actually do the switching for the high current uh, going to the power supply. Uh, so I figured, well, this is easy enough. Uh, I'll do that. I didn't have the exact relay he had, but I had a couple of. Um, uh, 120 volt AC relays, uh, in particular, uh, a couple of these, uh, uh, octal type relays. Um, and so I repurposed one of the, uh, one of the, uh, cutouts on the chassis, uh, here, which, uh, happened to be, uh, uh, just open enough to, uh, put an octal socket in. And I figured, well, that's easy enough. I'll use that. Uh, octal socket. I'll put a 120 volt AC uh, octal relay in there, and then I'll just uh, rewire the uh, the control for the relay coil to the on-off switch on the radio, and then the relay I do the switching. Well, I, I, the problem with that is that I've had is uh, the relay is not uh, operating reliably. And I've done some troubleshooting, uh, sort of uh, experimenting with uh, different connections. And it seems to be the problem is in uh, the initial starting surge on the power supply. So when you start a power supply up, um, the first thing that's going to happen is once you put the AC onto the transformer, uh, the, the AC on the secondary side is going to rectify and... and start to charge the uh, filter capacitors on the DC side. Uh, this unit's got some fairly large uh, filter capacitors. Um, I think the uh, the high voltage, the high high voltage is in the 650 volt range uh, and that's loaded so unloaded it's running about 730 volts uh, off of a voltage uh, uh, it's a, a voltage doubler circuit and so in the process of that charging there's this pretty significant inrush of current and that inrush of current is causing the relay to chatter uh, significantly when it closes because it's closing at the same time that inrush is hitting and um, so the relay starts to chatter and it ends up uh, drawing excessive current because of the chattering of the relay and, and blowing the um, fuse on the power supply. Now, again, I don't know uh, a whole lot of uh, details about the other fellow's rebuild. Uh, maybe he, uh, he used a different relay. It's, it's possible that there may be some issues with that. I don't think that's the case. Um, but uh, anyway, it, the, whole, the, the whole process got me to thinking... Uh, is there a better way to do this? Is there some way to limit this inrush uh, current? Um, you know, even if the relay did work, there's still the issue with the inrush current, and I don't want uh, this thing blowing uh, rectifiers 
uh, later on down the road and having to go back in and me having to go back in and do repair work. So what I've got here is I've got the power supply set up on the bench and uh, although there's a relay here, it's not hooked into the circuit right now. Essentially what I've got is the circuit is wired up to, uh, to work as it uh, would normally work. Um, I'm going to do on off control. I've got the uh, few, the line fuse pulled and instead I'm going to use a, uh, a circuit breaker uh, because I'm tired of blowing fuses on this thing for right now while I'm troubleshooting it. And we're, but we're going to use a circuit breaker to cr control the on off and we'll take a look at the inrush uh, current and I've got uh, right now so I've got my uh, I've got a current probe set up here on a uh, five, L, uh, 5 amp per division scale and that's feeding into this oscilloscope here, which is terminated to 50 ohms, which is the way the uh, the uh, the Tech 503 is set up. It needs to be terminated to 50 ohms. And we're looking at the uh, current through uh, this. Uh, this is the hot line going into the um, transformer primary. So we'll set. Uh, we've got that set up. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna power the radio on, and uh, we'll set the scope up for a, a single ch uh, a single capture, and we'll capture the inrush current waveform and we'll take a look at it all right so here we go so we'll set this up for a single run and we've got everything powered up we'll power up the uh, uh, the isolation transformer so we're set for 120 volts on the isolation transformer and we'll set this back to uh, single again and we'll turn the unit on all right, so there we go. Um, all right, so the unit's powered now and running, uh, uh, just sitting here idle on the bench. It's drawing about, uh, about uh, mm, 0.3, uh, three, uh, maybe 300 and a little over 300 milliamps just sitting here idle on the bench. Uh, and we'll look here at uh, the scope and here's our trace so right now um, like I said uh, the probe is set for 5 amps per division so each of these divisions is going to be 5 amps so you can see here our initial swing down and we'll turn the menu off here uh, went uh, 5, 10, 15, 20. Looks like 20 amps. Just peaked down there at the 20 amp mark. And then it swung up here. 5, 10, 15, we'll call it 17-ish uh, amps on the upswing. So just this swing here was from 20 to um, 17 amps. So that's almost 40 amp almost 40 amp uh, current swing and then it's uh, dropped down less uh, and this is and this would be to be expected right because as your inverse current your inverse current is going to peak at turn on and then it's going to decay away as the capacitor bank charges and of course we're looking at the um, I think the scope set on 20 milliseconds uh, sweep rate so we're looking at somewhere uh, in the neighborhood 20 milliseconds per division so 20 40 uh, 60 80 somewhere around 100 milliseconds for the inrush all right so we're back uh, back here with the breadboard and uh, just a real uh, really simple circuit um, we got a uh, small uh, uh, step down transformer here to uh, just take the 120, step it down to about uh, 12 volts AC. Run it through a uh, full wave bridge rectifier filter capacitor on the breadboard here. And then uh, just a really simple time delay. Uh, basically the way this works is a, um, is a 9 volt relay. It's controlled by a transistor here. And uh, so when voltage is applied uh, to the circuit, this capacitor charges through this 10K resistor. And once this uh, capacitor charges to a sufficient voltage, um, this uh, transistor is turned on to a point uh, that will turn the relay on. Uh, it takes about maybe a second or two to uh, for the voltage to um, charge up uh, this capacitor. 
to a, to a high enough potential uh, where this transistor will turn on. And then once uh, this relay turns on here, it's attached to turn on the um, this uh, big octal 120 volt AC relay. All right, and uh, so we'll go ahead and demonstrate now. So we'll unplug uh, this one here, and the relay you heard uh, dropped out, and we'll plug it back in. And that's about the uh, delay, so maybe a second or two. But that should be sufficient for uh, to get our um, inrush current to uh, decay yeah. away. The, the relay completed, and uh, we'll take a look at it here. It's just on a piece of breadboard. Um, of course, there's our uh, our uh, master relay there with the nine volts, and there's a uh, little circuitry down in there, and then our transformer, and then this is going to be our uh, slave relay to actually turn the power supply on. So we'll turn it on, and uh, you'll be able to uh, sort of see the contacts here as they, uh, they go closed. All right, so there they go. So you can see there's a there's about a one or maybe two second delay there, uh, which should be sufficient for doing the for limiting the inrush. And then of course turn it off, and we'll turn it back on, and turn it off. All right, so we're back and just gonna run through a quick schematic of the uh, the final setup here on this delay circuit. So. Um, of course, here's our 120 volt line coming in. There's a line fuse, and it branches off and goes to this would be the remote switch uh, line going to the radio, and that switch switches this uh, relay here, which is our octal relay. We'll look at that in a minute, and it also switches another line to our delay circuit, which is here. So how this works is you're going to turn the switch on. And initially what's going to happen is, is this relay will uh, close in as soon as this power switch is turned on. And the main uh, 120 volt to the main transformer will be supplied through uh, both these sets of contacts, which will go close through a 100 ohm uh, 2 watt resistor. At the same time, when you close the switch, that also energizes our delay circuit. And after... The, uh, the time delay, uh, about two seconds. Uh, this relay will pick up here, which will then close this contact here, uh, which is uh, in parallel with our um, with our uh, inrush limiter resistor here. So it shorts out our inrush limiter through these contacts. And then that completes the path to the main transformer to give us our uh, full uh, current capability. I'm just looking at uh, the power supply were set up again uh, this time with the uh, circuitry in place uh, there's our um, inrush limiter resistor here installed on the socket this is the octal socket for the um, that uh, the main relay and I've got a jumper in place uh, going here to a switch to simulate the remote on off switch and we'll be looking at current through the um, 120 volt AC line here and we'll look at that on the on the oscilloscope all right and so this time now we're set up on the um, we're looking at uh, 500 milliamps per division Remember before we were looking at 5 amps per division so this time we're looking at 500 milliamps per division on the current probe and we'll get the uh, scope set up for a uh, single run so we're set up for single run and looking at the voltage on the high, high uh, voltage going out to the um, RF finals. So we'll turn it on. All right, and there we go. So you may or may not have heard it, but uh, both our, as soon as we turned the power switch on, our main relay here closed in. And then after a delay, our uh, delay relay closed. And so we got our 700 volts on our high voltage output and I'm gonna go ahead and turn that off but uh, we'll look at the scope at the results here on the scope alright so again remember we're looking at 500 milliamps per division this time and we're looking at now we're looking at uh, so one two three divisions on the uh, on the downswing so that would be one and a half amps 
and on the upswing again looking at another one and a half amps so we're looking at now a three amp swing which uh, which is going to get smaller and smaller as it goes still looking at uh, uh, 20 milliseconds per division the surge the peak surge current is significantly less so we're talking about from uh, anywhere from 37 to 40 amps without the inrush limiter now we're looking at 3 amps for the inrush all right now the units unplugged and everything's uh, been uh, discharged sufficiently so we'll just look real quick at the final at the uh, final results here here's our where we installed our delay circuit uh, just on the side of the chassis here and this is our of course our main relay which uh, is going to switch the power on and off to the main transformer and we'll just have a quick look at the bottom of the unit uh, again uh, kind of already looked through this but you know we've got our uh, this is our main our high voltage rectifiers over here with our uh, this orange lead being the 650 volts going to the finals and um, this other section section down here and finished up over here the yellow lead going to the uh, B plus for the low voltage uh, I believe that's around 250 volts going to the um, the, uh, the all the uh, uh, mixer and the RF and the, uh, all the other portions of the radio and then we've got our bias supply over here which uh, is going to generate our negative bias and that's, that's pretty much it our filament supply and then you know filter caps here so really not much uh, new nothing new much new there but uh, the main the main thing being that uh, that delay circuit to uh, to limit our inrush limit so that's it I hope you uh, enjoyed the rebuild and I, th I think this worked out pretty well and uh, that's all for now thanks